Flowers are one of the most fascinating sights to behold. Incidentally, flowers also happen to be the site of sexual reproduction as they contain the andricium and gynecium, the male and female reproductive organs of a plant. You can see many variations in the gynecium of different flowers. For example, the gynecium can be monocarpus, consisting of a single pistil or carpel. Or it may be multicarpus, in which case we see several pistils in a single flower. Moreover, a multicarpellary gynecium may be apocarpus, that is, the pistils are free. Or syncarpus, where the pistils are fused. If you observe the structure of a pistil, you will find that it consists of the stigma at the tip, followed by the style in the middle and an ovary at the base. While the stigma is a landing platform for pollen grains, the style, an elongated slender structure, connects the stigma to the ovary, the basal bulging part of the pistil. Morphological studies of the ovary have revealed that it contains one or more cavities called locules or ovarian cavities that are surrounded by an ovary wall. Within the locule, you will find ovules or megasporangia that are attached to the ovary wall in a region called the placenta. These ovules may be arranged in free central, axile, marginal, parietal or basal placentation. Moreover, after fertilization, the ovules form seeds while the ovary develops into a fruit. Did you know that different flowers of different plant species have a varying number of ovules in their ovaries? A peach, for instance, develops from an ovary containing a solitary ovule. A papaya, on the other hand, has several ovules in its ovary, and that's why you see numerous seeds in the fruit when it is split open. The ovule, considered by botanists as the forerunner of the seed, has an oval or egg-shaped body. It remains attached to the placenta by a stalk called the funicle. In fact, the ovule's body fuses with the funicle in a region called the hilum. The ovule is well protected with one or two protective coverings called integuments. These integuments later form the seed coat. The integuments cover the entire ovule except at the apex, where they form a narrow opening called the micropyle. Did you know that the micropyla end acts as an entry point for the pollen tube during the process of fertilization? While the micropyle forms one end of the ovule, the chalaza forms the basal part of the ovule. At the chalazal region, we find that the funicle and integuments join the nucellus, the center region of the ovule that's made of a mass of diploid, colorless, thin-walled, parenchymatous cells containing food reserve materials. In the nucellus of a mature ovule, lies the embryo sac, 
the female gametophyte, which develops from a megaspore. This megaspore is formed when one of the nocellus cells, towards its micropyla end, gets differentiated into a megaspore mother cell, which can be easily distinguished from other cells due to its large size, dense cytoplasm, and prominent nucleus. The megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form four megaspores which arrange themselves in a linear tetrad. This process of formation of megaspores from the megaspore mother cell is called megasporogenesis. Of the four megaspores, usually the one near the calasal end becomes functional, whereas the other three near the micropyla end degenerate. The functional megaspore enlarges and simultaneously undergoes mitotic division to form an embryo sac. This type of formation of the embryo sac from a single megaspore is known as monosporic development. While undergoing these mitotic divisions, the nucleus of the functional megaspore first divides to form two nuclei which move to the two opposite ends of the embryo sac. This is the two nucleate stage of the embryo sac. The mitotic divisions continue and result in the formation of the four nucleate and later the eight nucleate stages of the embryo sac. A mature embryo sac thus has eight nuclei after three mitotic divisions, which are arranged in a group of four at each end of the embryo sac. Interestingly, the mitotic divisions that occur in the megaspore's nucleus are free nuclear, which means the division of the nuclei doesn't immediately trigger cytoplasmic division and cell wall formation. Instead, we see the formation of cell walls only after the eight nucleate stage, due to which six of the eight nuclei organize into cells. The two remaining nuclei, called polar nuclei, migrate to the center of the embryo sac. Thus, we find the embryo sac to be in seven-celled and eight nucleate stage with six cells at the poles and a large central cell with two nuclei in the center. Meanwhile, the six cells organize to form the typical structure of the embryo sac, which is now ready for fertilization. The three cells present at the calasal end, for instance, group together to form the antipodal cells which do not have any specific function whereas the three cells at the micropyla end group together to form the egg apparatus while one of the cells functions as an egg or the female gamete the other two cells are called synergids if you observe the micropyla tip of the synergids you will notice special cellular thickenings called a filiform apparatus that guides the pollen grains into the synergid. The synergids as well as other cells form the embryo sac, the female gametophyte born inside the pistil.